I really value uh, this opportunity uh, because I wanted to uh, talk very briefly about my first vision to this region um, as uh, Special Envoy and of the Secretary General for the Great Lakes and also uh, to explain my own vision and approach uh, to the framework which was signed on the 24th of February of this year by 11 governments, including Uganda, which has played a very strong role in bringing about the framework, and indeed President Museveni, whom I will meet after this, played a very key role, and I'm going to acknowledge that. It was signed by 11 countries and four institutions as guarantors, the United Nations, the African Union, the Great Lakes Conference, and uh, SADC. And uh, the framework commits um, the government of the Democratic Republic of Congo uh, to take a number of national steps, the governments of the region to take um, important steps, and the international community. Um, I have uh, characterized all of this in what I call a framework of hope, and we're going to have all of you circulated with that framework of hope, which outlines the commitments under the um, uh, framework agreement of the uh, 24th of February, the Security Council Re Resolution uh, 2098, which also uh, uh, provided for the Intervention Brigade and strengthening of UNESCO, and my own mandate. And in that framework of hope, you will see that I reference the importance of civil society, that I believe that this is a framework of hope for the peoples of the countries of this region. And therefore, in each place that I have been, I have wanted to meet with civil society and separately with women's groups. So I'm having a separate meeting at lunchtime today. It was created um, rather at the last minute as this opportunity presented itself rather at the last minute. Um, but uh, uh, I have been doing the same thing in Kinshasa where that is my main message. I want your support. I would like you to circulate this framework of hope among your members. and to become engaged and to support the government of Uganda, but also to hold the government of Uganda to account for the commitments under the regional part of the um, framework, as I will do um, with uh, President um, Museveni. Uh, I will be back here in about three weeks um, in a further visit, and then there will be a meeting in the context of the African Union probably on the 26th of May. The 50th anniversary is on the 25th of May, as you probably know. And there will be a meeting of the 11 um, states plus the four institutions. At the end of this visit, on the 6th of May, I will be reporting to the Security Council. In my report to the Security Council, I will make it clear the way that I am approaching my mandate and that I really believe that civil society is extraordinarily important. I'm also conscious of how difficult this mission is. Even since I started in Kinshasa, and went to Goma, and yesterday in Kigali, um, the tension is rising because of the intervention brigade coming into play because of fears. So it is going to need um, very strong commitment. And in a way, it's not business as usual for anybody, including the bilateral donors, including the diplomatic corps. Yesterday evening, um, thankfully, there was a very wide um, um, uh, uh, participation at a working dinner with the diplomatic corps and I was able to convey to them uh, the messages. I also made it clear to them that um, as far as I'm concerned this is a framework of hope and that I uh, look to all stakeholders, if I can put it that way, including civil society. Uh, this time it has to be the people of the Democratic Republic of Congo, and I emphasize this in Kinshasa and Goma, um, who put pressure on the government there. It has to be civil society in Kigali, as I emphasized yesterday, and women's groups who um, create that kind of pressure. And I'm saying the same in Uganda. Tomorrow I go to Burundi. I will be briefly in South Africa. I have, I, I'm not able to get to all the other 11 signatures on this visit, but I'm in touch with their leaders, and I will be seeking uh, to, um, to, to reach them. Um, the reason that I'm looking separately to women's groups is because women actually are giving a leadership, which I want to build on. Um, I have been aware of the important steps uh, over the years to develop plans of action under 1325. Indeed, I remember coming here uh, to Kampala 
uh, during the African Union meeting in 2010, where I needed the support of Uganda for a ministerial meeting. I was chairing a civil society advisory group to the United Nations on women, peace and security, co-chairing with my very good friend, Binti Diop of Fam Africa Solidarity. And I wanted to meet with President Museveni, and he was at his farm, but he sent a helicopter for me, so we went and met him and asked him to have a ministerial meeting of the Security Council during October 2010, which he did. And that was an important meeting. It was one of the longest and most interesting meetings of the Security Council on 1325. Women being involved at the table, women being a special representative of the Secretary General, women being mediators. And the Secretary General, when he um, asked me to take on this role, said that I would be the first woman to be senior mediator. And um, so I'm taking that role and going to do it differently and engage women. So I will be in Bujumburu in June for a meeting which Binta Diop had been organizing of um, the uh, regional plan of action under 1325. Interestingly, at the moment, those engaged, as I understand it, in the regional plan of action are the DRC, Rwanda, and Burundi, uh, but not as yet uh, Uganda. I think it would be important that Uganda become engaged in that process too. And I, that's why I wanted, in particular, to have a separate meeting with women's groups um, to discuss this and hear their views um, on it. So, um, my role as a special envoy is not to think that I can do anything. I, I'm very weak if I don't have strong partnership and support, but I am very engaged. I will do my best as special envoy, but I need the help and support of others. Uh, people have asked me, you know, why um, a framework of hope? And I said, that's because I heard Archbishop Desmond Tutu. I am one of the elders that have been brought together by Nelson Mandela. Of course, I'm one of the younger elders. I want that made very clear. But I spent a lot of time in this wonderful company of my fellow elders. And I was involved with Archbishop Desmond Tutu some time ago um, on a panel. Um, and a journalist said to Archbishop Tutu, why are you such an optimist? And he said, oh no, he said, I I'm not an optimist. No, I'm not an optimist. I'm a prisoner of hope. And I kind of borrow that phrase. In this difficult mission, I am a prisoner of hope. I'm determined we will this time create a framework of peace and security and economic development for the peoples and particularly the women and children who have suffered so much in Eastern DRC as refugees in this country, in Rwanda, in Burundi. And it's time that we had a lasting solution. So I really ask your help and I'd be delighted now to answer any questions to respond to you, but I also look to you to distribute widely this framework of hope. And when I'm back in three weeks' time, maybe I can continue the discussion with some of you to take this forward, because um, I, I need your engagement. And I really am glad that you have had this excellent exchange and review of civil society here in Uganda. It's a good practice that I will talk about in some of the other countries that perhaps could engage in a similar process. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you.